This is Mr. Martin. Uh, these are the uh, video notes for Math Analysis Section 4.2. This is uh, video 2. So um, in this video we're going to start out talking about uh, domain, range, and uh, period of the sine and cosine. So if you notice here I've got uh, the graph of uh, y equals sine of x and I've got the graph of uh, y equals cosine of x and um, here's our unit circle which we could use to generate both of these graphs. So um, and I think I mentioned I'm going to show you a little demonstration about how to generate the sine curve based on the unit circle but as we travel around this circle either um, counterclockwise or clockwise okay if we go counterclockwise we're going in a positive direction so we'll generate this portion of the curve going to the right of the y-axis and if we go around clockwise we'll generate um, the portion to the left of the y-axis so in order to get y equals sine of x at every point that we hit along this curve so I'll just pick a couple of points here this point this point this point this point whatever these y coordinates are at this at these points we're gonna graph those points on our curve um, versus the angle that we go to so this angle let's just say it's uh, I don't know pi over eight and then we're gonna get some um, actually some y value over here okay so we're gonna graph the angle versus the y values and as we travel around the circle we're gonna generate each one of these points okay once we hit up here that means we're at the top of the circle right so um, pi over 2 which is 90 and my y coordinate is 1 so we could see that we have a point at 1 then when we come back down here to 180 or pi so here's our pi we can see the y coordinate is 0 so we see the point here at 0 then when we come down here to 3 pi over 2 we see the y coordinate is negative 1 so at 3 pi over 2 we have negative 1 so this red portion of the graph represents one full revolution around our circle which is going to give us one period of the graph so the sine and cosine graphs they're repeating functions um, and the part that repeats we call the period so in this case the period goes from 0 to 2 pi and then the next period would look exactly the same so if we just kept drawing a little bit over here okay then we've got a second period you see it looks exactly the same as the red portion so then to generate the cosine curve instead of looking at the y coordinates we would look at the x coordinates so again if you look at these um, red points here at 0 so 0 radians over here the x coordinate is 1 at pi over 2 the x coordinate is 0 so we're right over here at 0 at pi our x coordinate is negative 1 so that's why we have a point at pi negative 1 uh, 3 pi over 2 our x coordinate is 0 so that's why at 3 pi over 2 we have 0 and then coming back to the beginning again over here at 2 pi our x coordinate is 1 so you can see the difference between um, one period of the sine it looks like um, you know two hills one right side up one right side down uh, the cosine period I'd like to call it a fruit bowl it sort of looks like a fruit bowl or some sort of a cup um, so moving on to domain and range of these graphs you can see that the sine graph is going to continue to the left and the right forever so our domain is going to be all real numbers and then the lowest value that it will ever hit is negative one and the highest value that it will ever hit is going to be positive one so our range is going to be negative one less than or equal to y less than or equal to one so since our y values are going to be between negative 1 and 1 that means that our sine curve is going to be between negative 1 and 1 and then over here with the cosine again we can see the curve is going to continue to the left or to the right forever so we have the domain of all real numbers and again the maximum values are 1 the minimum values are negative 1 so our range here is going to be our values for x are going to be between negative 1 and 1 so again this uh, repeating um, manner of the graph we say that it's periodic okay definition of a periodic function 
Um, a function f is periodic if there exists a positive real number c such that f of t plus c is the same as f of t for all t and no domain of f. The least number c for which f is periodic is called the period of f. So if, again, if we take a look at these graphs, you can see that I have this point up here. And then also, if I move over here, I've got this point over here. So if I add 2 pi, I'll get to that same spot, positive 1, just on a different portion of the graph. Okay, so the distance between any of the corresponding points on each period, so from here to here, plus 2 pi. Okay, we could do the same thing over here. Um, from this point to this point, 2 pi. From this point over to this point would be plus 2 pi. So for these curves, our period, that value of c, which will give us back that same value would be 2 pi. So 2 pi would be the period. And uh, when we start graphing these, we'll look at periods that are longer and shorter. Um, we'll just be transforming them. So if you look at this next diagram, you can see that um, over here, these are just the pi over 4s and pi over 2s, um, or, or our quadrant angles. So I've got pi over 4 here. And then if I add 2 pi, I get back to that. So here's pi over 4, add 2 pi again, I get back to that. So um, my sine and my cosine would be the same. Again, over here, um, I've got 3 pi over 4. If I add 2 pi, a full revolution, I'm going to get back to there. Um, so our next one here would be pi over 4 plus 4 pi. So that would take us to pi over 4 and then two full revolutions. And then pi over 4 plus 6 pi, that would be three full revolutions, and so on. Um, so, and we can use that periodic nature to help us solve problems. Um, and you'll see that in the examples that we do next. All right, so moving on to the examples, um, we want to determine the six trig trigonometric functions for the angle theta. Um, remember, this is our x, y, our x value, this is our y value, and um, we saw in the first video that the x is the cosine and the y is the sine. So we've got the sine of theta is going to be negative 5 over 13. And the cosine of theta is going to be 12 over 13. Notice we're in the fourth quadrant, so the x is positive and the y is negative. And then the cos or the tangent of theta, it's the sine over the cosine, so that's going to be negative 5 over 12. And then to get the other trig functions, we just need the reciprocals of these, so the cosecant of theta is negative 13 over 5. The secant of theta is going to be 13 over 12. And the cotangent of theta is negative 12 over 5. Okay, make sure you write down any questions that you have as we go. Pause when you need to. All right, so for example 2, we want to find the point x, y on the unit circle that corresponds to the real number t, and then find that would be find the six trig functions. So um, 4 pi over 3, I know it's a pi over 3, and I know that any of my pi over 3's have coordinates 1 half and root 3 over 2, so I just need to figure out where 4 pi over 3 is, and then I can figure out what's positive and what's negative. So the way I like to do it is think of where my um, my 180 and my 360 are in terms of thirds. So I know that this would be 3 pi over 3, 3. This would be 6 pi over 3, starting at 0. Um, this would be 1.5 pi over 3. This uh, 270 down here, which is 3 pi over 2, if I just add the 1.5 and the 3, that's a little shortcut. So I've got 4.5 pi over 3. Okay, but really, once I get the 3 pi over 3, I know that 4 pi over 3 is going to be the pi over 3 
in the third quadrant, which would make this negative and this negative. Okay, so now that I have the x and y's, I can find the sine, cosine, well, I can find all my trig functions. So the uh, sine of t is the y coordinate, so that's negative root 3 over 2. The cosine of t is the x coordinate, so that's a half. The tangent of t, it's going to be the uh, sine over the cosine or the y over the x. Um, so negative divided by negative is going to be positive, so that's going to be root 3 over 1, which is just root 3 because the 2's are going to cancel. And then I need the reciprocals of all of these. So the cosecant of t is going to be negative 2 over root 3, which is going to simplify to negative 2 root 3 over 3. Ask me questions if you uh, forgot how to simplify those. The secant of t is going to be negative 2, the reciprocal of negative 1 half. And the cotangent of t is going to be 1 over root 3, which is root 3 over 3. All right, so um, let's talk about the uh, x and y coordinates for uh, part b and part c, and then I'm going to let you go ahead and find the rest. So we've got negative 31 pi over 6, and we know that the coordinates for any pi over 6 are going to be root 3 over 2 and a half, so we just need to figure out where negative 31 is. So if we use the period, um, we know every 12 pi over 6, that's 2 pi, it's going to go around and be back to 0. So um, if I take out a 12 pi over 6, if I take out a 2 pi and another 2 pi, so that's 24 pi over 6, I'm going to be left with uh, 7 pi over 6. So really I'm going around 12 pi over 6, 24 pi over 6, and I need to go another 7, so this would give me 6 pi over 6 more, and then 7 would put me right there in the second quadrant. So I see that uh, since I'm in the second quadrant, the x will be negative and the y will be positive. If, uh, I'm pretty sure I did that right, but if I made a mistake, just let me know in class. Um, now we have the x and y coordinates. We can find the sine and cosine. Um, actually, all six trig functions. So moving on to the next one, I have 17 pi over 4. I know that 2 pi is going to be 8 pi over 4. So I know I'm going to go around 8. And then I need to go another 9 more. So that's going to be another 8. And then 1 more gives me uh, 17 pi over 4, which would put me in the first quadrant. And I know the coordinates for all my pi over 4s are root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, first quadrant, everything's positive. We can find all six of our trig functions. So go ahead and finish uh, parts B and C there. Um, if you have questions, make sure you ask me and uh, we'll see you in class.